The level of talent, some of the guys and I were talking on the bench the other night, and every time someone checks in the game, I see like 10 year vet, 13, 15, you know, perennial all star. Then, you know, obviously Giannis yeah. is yeah. the greatest player on the planet. And so, like I said, I just want to compliment my teammates. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter to me if I shoot one shot, five, 10, as long as I'm impacting winning, that's what matters to me. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Bucks Film Room episode. This time we have Myers Leonard. Myers, we've got a few clips for you, sure. and you're gonna notice the ones I pick are very intentional. Okay. Uh, do you what, what's film like for you in your process? Where does it fit in your routine? Well, it's extremely important, not only individually but for the team. You know, you look at the positives, the negatives. What do we do well? What can we do? You know, to fix a few things. And just to see how each of the units are flowing together. Uh, defensively, are we in the right spots? Are we communicating? Are we getting back in transition? On the offensive end, are we getting the guys in the right positions that could you know, make the plays to help us win the game? So it's, it's extremely important, film is. This, was, uh, this clip that we have right here uh -huh. was your first game back in the NBA in years. Like, yeah. And it, it's... A, of course it would be against the Heat, right? That's just how life works. Yes, no <laughs> um, question. What, what were you sensing going into this game? I'm gonna be honest. Uh, when I signed my 10 day, I had, I had no idea if I was even gonna play a single minute. Uh, I hadn't played basketball in two years. All the guys came back from All-Star on Wednesday. We had a scrimmage that night, a light practice Thursday, and then I played against the Miami Heat on, on Friday. So. <laughs> Things happen pretty quickly for me, but I'll say this about the about the Bucks organization. First of all, they've been absolutely incredible at all levels. But from a basketball perspective, I fit right into the system because I'm. A, I guess you could say I do a version of what Brooke does. I space the floor as a big. I you know I set big screens, uh, and then my one thing on the defensive end certainly is my communication level. So I'm always trying to do whatever I can to help the team win. But just in general, I feel so good about my ability to help impact winning here at the Bucks because I don't need to be the guy. I've never wanted to be the guy. I just want to do the little things to add up to winning. And I think the guys have already sensed that. I know, you know, Coach Bud and, and the rest of the staff have as well. So that feels good and it feels good to be wanted. So yeah. uh, I'm extremely grateful. Well, I think that's something that's so unique about this team is that everybody has a different role and, and they embrace that. And, totally. and it's okay for every role to be different. Of course. Um, you walked in and you knew exactly what this clip was. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh -huh. my, um, my first bucket is a buck. And it's it's so crazy because you walked in the gym that night and you didn't even know if you were gonna get on the floor. I had no clue, Zero. Let alone knock down a shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and guys, guys say, you know, this Bucks team first off, um, did any hesitation on even putting it up? No, okay. I told myself if I'm open, I gotta let it fly because I know that's what the staff wants. And that's yeah. also, primarily it's going to be Chris, Drew, and Giannis, when they throw you the ball, it's for a reason. It means you're open. And like I said, my only goal is to impact winning. And a lot of times it might just be, let's say here, instead of Chris throwing the ball to me, Bobby gets the, the roll, he pulls in Duncan, and Cody stays with me, Cody Zeller. Yeah. Then Chris has an attack angle, and he's an, an incredible ISO player. So my goal is always just pull the big away from the rim. Now you see he's helping at what we call the nail, Mm -hmm. Chris throws a perfect pass, and that's going to give me just enough time to get my shot off. So, again, it's an advantage, particularly at the center position, but anywhere, uh, any position on the floor, if you can shoot, obviously, you can impact winning. So, um, that's, like I said, that's my um, comfort zone, is spacing the floor and, and doing what I can to help help us win the game. But here, um, this is a pretty quick trigger for me, though. I feel good about it, because I was just told myself I'm just going to be decisive and let it fly if I'm open. How much have you found that you're wide open when you do get in the game on this team? Do you feel like you're open? Quite often, because the, the level of talent, some of the guys and I were talking on the bench the other night, and it's, every time someone checks in the game, I see like 10 year vet, 13, 15, you know, perennial all star. Then, you know, obviously Giannis yeah. is yeah. the greatest player on the planet. And so. Like I said, I just want to compliment my teammates. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter to me if I shoot one shot, five, ten. As long as I'm impacting winning, that's what matters to me. And so, um, yeah, I find myself open quite often. But that's also because, you know, I play the center position. 
And a lot of times the five's job on the defensive end, Cody, in this clip, his job is to help yeah. and protect the paint. And so the more I can pull him away. And now let's say, hypothetically, after this clip, because I just made a three, Cody probably doesn't want me to make another one. So if Chris gives a ball fake, now he can get right downhill yep. because the elbow in the, the – uh, right through the free throw lane is going to be open. So it's just, it, basketball is like chess. We make a move or I do something impactful, then it opens up something else. And then let's say Duncan overhelps and now it's a corner three for AJ. Like every little piece, it's like, dom, uh, you know, it's like a domino effect. It so. is, yeah. Well, and it helped, I mean, look at, look <clears throat> at all the people on the court right now. Mm. You have to respect every single one of them from the three point line. Exactly. Which, that's that's it's wild crazy. to me. I mean, I'm, I'm so impressed with the roster, yeah. but uh, it's so fun. Okay, so Mars, I'm gonna be honest. When sure. you got to the Bucks, I knew you could do this. Yeah. Did I know um, that you could do this next play? Let's I find don't out. know. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let's we'll watch it through. And that I mean, I was on a call, and I think I just like screamed because I was just <laughs> one out of excitement. But I mean, take us take us to this moment. Okay, so typically speaking, <laughs> as a player. I tend to stay at the three-point line, but as I've gotten to know the system, you know, talk to Wes, for example, he mm. was my vet in Portland. He's like, Myers, you're seven feet, 260 pounds. Like, go to the paint. <laughs> because then it opens up other things and other, other opportunities. Right. As soon as Drew got downhill, and I knew that uh, Jordan was gonna stay high, uh, Miles Turner was gonna have to stay on Bobby right. and or help uphill, I knew how to, I had a perfect attack to the rim. And honestly, when I was younger, believe it or not, this is a true story. I can show you the video afterwards. I could dunk from the free throw line. I'm, I'm not nearly as athletic as I used to be. Right. But they keep the coaches keep saying, Myers, like, when you get a chance to attack the paint, you need to do it because that's going to collapse the defense. And then more times than not, you'll probably see me spacing. But when I have my opportunities, I have to take them. Well, talk about an opportunity. I mean, that has to feel good, Myers. Incredible. <laughs> you can't see my face right here. So I was searching for... Uh, for Wesley at first, I couldn't find him because he's always uh, at the end of the bench. And then yeah. I was trying to find Pat, couldn't find him. I was literally going like this. Right, you needed somebody to have that energy with Oh, you. for sure. Those, and then I was like, okay, I'm over 2 I'm just going to run back on defense because I don't want Bud <laughs> to scream at me. So, yeah, that, 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 that was a fun play. And, I, I, you know, I just appreciate that my team, you know, Drew in this case, found me. Yeah, well, and they have this knack for putting people. I mean, first off. Credit to Drew. He kind of pitches it back the to The guy you. is a basketball savant. Let's just remember that. It's sure. Watching him is just sensational. Well, and you just broke down. And playing with him. All that you were seeing and thinking in that moment. And yeah. We're going back and forth, but it was like a split second. Sure. You know? Yeah, it's always uh, split second decisions on the floor because NBA players are just too big, too fast, too strong, too smart, all those things. So yeah. you got to read and react and just try to make a play. And, and a play like that, yeah, it's, it's two points, but momentum matters in this Of course. Game. Yeah. Fun one. Okay, uh, last clip for you here. Mm -hmm. As we just get one more view of this. Oh, we'll yeah. We'll just go through everyone. You, you know, if you ever need to pump yourself up, come to the film room. We'll give you all <laughs> the angles. For sure. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, so oh, yeah. we're going to dissect this. The Bucks, um, <laughs> one, when you all are like on the bench, how much do you pay attention to the Jumbotron? Honestly, it depends on the time in the game. Fair. Uh, what we call time score situation. That's Fair. when you're on the floor, but also off the floor. Right. So let's say, you know, we are up a large margin or something. Yeah. yeah you, maybe you get a little, which I shouldn't admit, but it's the truth. Oh, we all yeah. as athletes, yeah. the, there's both ends of the spectrum. You got to stay locked in, but if you're too locked in, then you're uptight. And then if you're not paying any attention and you're too loose, then you, you, if sure. you get thrown in the game, it's like, whoa. Yeah. So there's, there's a kind of a happy medium but I, I see things up there every now and then but if you're talking about when i sit, was uh we're talking about the boots or they showed my boots yes. oh yeah i saw you it. Said, okay so for the people at home the the bucks entertainment team does like a bucks drip they feet heat right they yeah. want to see what the guys have and you know they come through and, and all the guys have the the, the jays on or whatever mm -hmm. and here comes myers and they're just like myers and boots oh yeah every <laughs> night uh yeah it's your go-to what, what's the origin of that uh you know actually <sighs> I have quite an impressive collection of Jordan 1s. That's, okay. For a long time, that's all I wore. And I think, frankly, my time away from the NBA in those mm -hmm. two years and everything, I just wanted to find myself and what was real to me. And I think maybe when I was younger, I was chasing and trying to be someone that I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so this just reminds me, as I've always been, just mm -hmm. be myself. Yeah. Just a uh, happy, humble, uh, 
down home guy, I guess. And yeah. so I, I come from a small town. Technically speaking, we don't, not a lot of people wear cowboy boots. I just think they're fashionable and they look good. And uh, it's kind of my personal style. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's why. And you, wait, you said a line to one of your teammates, though, that you can collect these boots just like they collect Jays. Oh, yeah. They <laughs> thought it was hysterical. <laughs> Drew almost fell out of his locker. Because uh, I was like, I mean, what's the difference in me, you know, collecting and having, you know, 15, 20 pairs of cowboy boots? It's the same thing in having, right. you know, a, a collection of Jordan 1s. And they thought that, that was hysterical. Yeah. But, you know, you got to have different boots for different occasions, different colors, different... Uh, uh, material, got to have croc, got to have ostrich, got to have brown, black, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, diversity. Uh -huh. uh, last one I just want to hit you on is is your gratitude. That's one mm. thing I've, I've noticed since you've been here. Sure. The, the first 10 day, second 10 day. And then I remember in Phoenix, <clears throat> you didn't know. Oh, I was stressed out. <laughs> yeah, because you, you were at the end of your second 10 day. Yeah. You don't know, you only get two 10 days. And yep. it was either you're going to be here for the rest of the season or you weren't. Yeah. Uh, what was what were those twenty four hours like? Because it was on a back to back two. Mm -hmm. and yeah, we had just we had just won a big game in Sacramento, and I mean, frankly, just in general, the I have so much gratitude in my heart for the entire Bucks organization, the city of Milwaukee, uh, my teammates, the coaching staff, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I went through a bit of a tough two years. And for them to take a chance on me means the world to me. Um, you know, after I signed for the rest of the season, Mark Lazarus texted me, and I wish I could you know, express this to him in person, which I will at some point. Mm -hmm. The Bucks organization has changed my life because they took a chance on me, and that's the truth. And I will, I will never forget it. You know, until the day I die. One, one day I'll be able to tell my son, uh, and hopefully more kids. Uh, you know, this, these were the people that said, hey, you know, of course mistakes happen, but we're willing to take a chance on you. Mm -hmm. We've had our eye on you for a couple of years from a basketball perspective. We've always heard great things about you as a locker room guy. And, you know, that's who I am. Mm -hmm. And so I just am incredibly thankful um, because it's just a perfect fit for me. I love the Midwest. Like everyone I run to, run into around town is so nice. Mm -hmm. It's not like they're stopping me for a picture. And they just say, hey, welcome to Milwaukee. Like we're happy you're on the team. Have a great day. And I'm like, oh, I'm back in the Midwest. Yeah. Um, as I've already mentioned, my teammates, it helps that Wesley was my veteran in Portland, that I was Pat's vet in Portland. I played with Goran and Jay. You know, I've been around the league for, if you count this year, 10 years. And so I've you know, interacted with almost all of my teammates. And then just to know that John and the rest of the front office staff, uh, Bud and the rest of the coaches, everybody in the building, you know, I just want to show them First of all, how much I love the game, but more so from a human perspective, I almost always have a big smile on my face, always try to encourage everyone else, always the first guy up off the bench, or at least I try to be, just because I'm, I'm, I know this is like, uh, I don't know, everyone uses the same, but I'm just so, so blessed. Mm -hmm. And um, I, it's hard to fully put into words what this feels like to be a part of this organization. Um, so I'm taking everything day by day. I really am, even though I'm signed for the rest of the year. It's just like I put my head down on the pillow at night sometimes, and I'm just like I'm thanking God, that, you know, thanking the organization in my head. Like, wow, mm -hmm. they, you know, they really gave me a second opportunity mm -hmm. to uh, a second chance. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you being so kind. I remember the first time I met you, and I was like, I'm going to be bugging you. And you said, Zora, anytime, and you've held true to that. So Always. Thank you. <laughs> always, always. Thank you, Myers. Thanks.